King's College London. It's a great pleasure to see you here. Um, I would like to, to begin by asking your view of what impact the elections and the election result uh, will have on the struggle with terrorism and militancy within Pakistan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Levin. It's a great uh, pleasure for me to be here in the um, King's College London. Or, uh, <coughs> and this is a great educational institute and I am very pleased to be here and to have met with you. And as far as the elections are concerned, in my opinion, these elections will prove to be a good sign for the future of Pakistan and the region. First, Pakistan was going through its worst economic crisis. And comparatively, although they are not ideal, but Muslim League Nawaz's team, compared to the other parties, their team and their economic vision is much better than the others. The second point is, in this election, the Pakistani leadership received a clear message that they cannot get votes by using the traditional mix and by exploiting the differences between the voters as they used to do in past anymore. Instead, the Pakistani population has started voting on the basis of performance and this will pressurize the ruling party to improve their performance. And the third, the most serious problem that Pakistan is faced with is that of terrorism and religious extremism. And even in that regard, compared to the other leaders in the previous 10 years, Nawaz Sharif's thoughts have got clear and third, he is the only Pakistani leader that can challenge the Pakistani establishment compared to the other leaders. Nawaz Sharif is more able to engage different players such as religious extremists, the West and the Arab world. Or West or Arab Dunya, wo bhi unke darmiyan bridge banne ki Nawaz Sharif ki capability, wo hamare baaki qomi leaders ki banispat zyada hai. No, not only the Pakistani establishment between the religious uh, elements, uh, the Taliban, and the rest of the world. And what will, what do you think his strategy will be? towards militancy in Pakistan, because there's obviously a great public support in Pakistan for the idea of peace talks with, with the Pakistani Taliban. But a great many observers are not sure <coughs> what those peace talks could in fact be about, in effect, given the, well, the radicalism of the TTP's demands. Actually, if Nawaz Sharif would have gotten into confrontation with the army, that would have been dangerous for the country and for him. Before the election, it seemed like as if, due to the past 10 years' bitterness, he will move forward in a confrontational mode with the establishment. But after the election, looking at the last one month's performance, it seems like that he will it seems like that he want to take them in confidence and move forward through consultation. Right after the election results, he wanted to start the negotiation process with the Taliban. But the military did not seem to be in favor of the negotiations at that time. And this is the reason why, after becoming the Prime Minister, when he spoke to the Parliament, he excluded the condition of talking to the Taliban.
At the moment, Nawaz Sharif's and the military are consulting each other and seem like that in next two weeks they will finalize a strategy in this regard. And my guess is that the military will come on board with him on this issue and at the first opportunity they will try to negotiate and reconciliate with the Taliban. So the first priority will be to have a negotiation and find a solution through that. But if this does not work, then Nawaz Sharif will come to using serious power and force against them. Taliban ke khilaaf puri quwwat aur sanjeedgi ke saath istemal karne ki taraf aayenge Actually at the moment it does not look like that the Pakistani state can fulfill the demands of the Taliban and neither does Taliban seem to be in the mood of fulfilling the Pakistani government's demands to Pakistani hukumat ya riyasat ke liye mumkin nazar nahi aata aur isi tarah Taliban is mood mein nazar nahi aate ki jo Pakistani state ke unse demands hai in my opinion, maximum what Nawaz Sharif's government can offer is the general pardon and can compensate for the collateral damage in their areas. A part of this, they cannot do anything else. One of the TTP's demand will be resolved in the next year anyway. It is the demand of Pakistan getting out of the NATO's war against Taliban. Secondly, since the Afghan Taliban are negotiating with the Americans, this makes this TTP's demand fairly weak. And the second demand is the implementation of Sharia. This can be resolved through debate and they can be assured that in Pakistani constitution, Sharia is already the supreme law. Therefore, if there is going to be any deal, it will be on the point of clemency. A part of this, the Pakistani government cannot offer anything else. In this regard, Imran Khan's understanding has few problems. Since the actual opposition role is being played by the Imran Khan's party and also the fact that they have been in favor of negotiations with the Taliban, this makes Nawaz Sharif's position very strong compared to those who oppose the negotiations with the Taliban. This means that Imran Khan's stance strengthens Nawaz Sharif's stance in opposition to the establishment and others that oppose the negotiations with the Taliban. ان کے مقابلے میں نواز شریف کی پوزیشن عمران خان کی وجہ سے مضبوط ہو جاتی ہے کہ دیکھیں وہ بھی مذاکرات کی حمایت کر رہے ہیں یعنی اسٹیبلشمنٹ یا نیگوسیشن کے جو دوسرے اپوننٹ ہیں پاکستان میں ان کے مقابلے میں نواز شریف کی نیگوسیشن یا مذاکرات کے لیے پوزیشن مضبوط ہو جاتی ہے عمران خان کے اسٹانس کی وجہ سے بٹ پریکٹیکل رول ول بی پلیڈ بائی نواز شریف the establishment and few religious parties, whereas Imran Khan's practical role to me does not seem very significant. You mentioned the peace talks between America and the Afghan Taliban. I, I find these very hopeful. I welcome them greatly. Uh, but of course, the Karzai regime in Kabul has been strongly opposed to them. So how hopeful are you about um, a positive outcome from such talks? Actually, the process that has started in Qatar, although there are still many problems associated with that, but the Qatar talks can only resolve the problem between the Americans and the Taliban especially the Afghan Taliban. The Afghan problem cannot be resolved through these or even the problem of Pakistan. The reason is, it is easy for the Taliban to accept the American demands and it is easy for the Americans to accept the Taliban demands. اور جو طالبان کا ڈیمانڈ ہے 
وہ امریکن کے لیے پورا کرنا آسان ہے Americans want to have an honorable exit, and if the Taliban could assure that the Afghan soil will not be used by the Al-Qaeda in future, and Taliban can easily accept their demands for cutting their ties with the Al-Qaeda. And the Taliban demands that the Americans should leave Afghanistan, that the Americans are going to do anyway. But the long-term Afghan peace requires intra-Afghan dialogue and reconciliation. But the problem is that it is very difficult for the Taliban to accept the demands of the Afghan government, and it is very difficult for the Afghan government to accept the demands of the Taliban. In Qatar process, although the Americans and the Taliban are negotiating, but the Afghan government and other factions are not much involved and are not on board, as much as the Taliban, the Americans, or even the Pakistanis are. Secondly, for the intra-Afghan dialogue and reconciliation, um, it is very important that the neighbors of Afghanistan and the regional powers are involved and facilitated. But unfortunately, in Qatar process, a part of Pakistan, no other neighboring country or regional power is involved. That is why Russia and India have supported the Karzai stand. So in my opinion, it is very important for the long-term peace in Afghanistan if it is the Qatar process or any other process, that the internal factions, the regional prayers, and the neighboring countries are also involved. What do you think that Pakistan and India need to agree with each other concerning Afghanistan? Actually, Pakistan and India have been fighting a proxy war in Afghanistan for a long time. Whenever India has managed to have some political space in Afghanistan, they have used it against the Pakistan. And similarly, when Pakistan had managed to have some political space in Afghanistan, they have used it against the India. Hmm. But how can you get out of that? But unfortunately, after 9-11, the Americans and the NATO have been giving more space to India in Afghanistan. And because of this, the Pakistanis have been frustrated and they have not been facilitating any peace talks as much as they could have. And now it seems that the Americans are addressing the Pakistani concerns. But the Indians are ignored. In my opinion, some of the Indians' interests and concerns are genuine, but some of their ambitions and demands are unjustified. And similarly, there have been some genuine concerns and interests aired by the Pakistanis. And in past, when Pakistan had the chance, they tried to address their own concerns but will ignore the India's concerns. And similarly, when India had the chance, they will address their concerns and ignore the Pakistan's concerns. If the Americans, the UK and the NATO countries could facilitate a reasonable patch-up between the India and Pakistan in this regard, and instead of using proxies, if the economy and trade routes are used and the focus is on Afghanistan, which is at the moment a battleground, then this situation could be turned around into an area of cooperation between the two countries.
And if the interdependency between Pakistan and India increases in Afghanistan, the Afghan situation can help resolve other issues like Kashmir and other problems between India and Pakistan. Although Pakistan is key Afghan neighbor and it has been the most affected country, therefore, understandably, it has a bigger stake in Afghanistan. But the Indian role cannot be ignored either. But in past, the Americans have tried to accommodate and excluded either India or Pakistan just to further their own interest in the region. अपने इंटरेस्ट के मुताबिक इंडिया या पाकिस्तान को एक्यूमोडेट या डिसलोकेट करने की कोशिश की है। एंड इन द वाइडर इंडिया पाकिस्तान रिलेशनशिप, व्हाट इन ऑर्डर टू गेट बेटर रिलेशंस, व्हाट वुड पाकिस्तान हैव टू गिव अप एंड व्हाट वुड इंडिया हैव टू गिव अप इन टर्म्स ऑफ कंसेशंस? एक्चुअली and in order to break away from it, the leaders of both countries will have to show some real leadership qualities. So, if the weapons of the modern time, such as economy and trade, etc., are used, and if the leadership of the two countries come to these issues and using these weapons, then the solution of the dispute will become easy. But if they keep on looking at this stereotypically, then this remains the issue of honor, prestige and national pride. And if things go this way, then it seems very difficult to find a solution to this problem. In Pakistan, unfortunately, to a great extent, the India-related policy is dictated by the military. And in India, the Pakistan-related policy, unfortunately, is dictated by their media. If the new political leadership of Pakistan come to the driving seat in policy making through good governance and competence and gaining the confidence of the nation, then they can possibly determine a new direction for the country and have the military buy into it too. And in India, if their leadership could show the real leadership qualities, and instead of following the media, if they could lead the media, then the situation can be patched up. There are two levels of trade. One, where Pakistani commodities are exported to India and Indian commodities are exported to Pakistan. First, there are a lot of reservations amongst the Pakistani traders and the army. And secondly, this level of economic dependence will not be durable means of building peace between the two countries. Actually, trade and economic activities are two levels. One is only تجارت کا ہے یہ کہ ان کی کمیوڈیٹیز ہماری طرف آ جائیں اور ہماری کمیوڈیٹیز ان کی طرف چلے جائیں اس کے بارے میں تحفظات بھی بہت زیادہ ہیں خصوصاً پاکستانی ٹریڈرز میں اور ملیٹری اسٹیبلشمنٹ میں اور میرے خیال میں یہ کوئی پائیدار تعلق کا یا پیس کے عمل کو the second level of economic cooperation are the long-term projects such as Pakistan becoming the trade route for Central Asia. If this happens, then these projects will not only facilitate the peace process and the traders will also 
less concerned about them. The second level of economic cooperation are the long-term projects, such as Pakistan becoming the route for Central Asia. And if this happens, then these projects will not only facilitate the peace process, but also that the traders will be far less concerned about them. Therefore, if the economic cooperation is built on a strategic basis and long-term projects are designed for this purpose, then it will not only bring the two countries together, so, for example, if gas pipeline is taken forward, as India has an energy crisis and this gas can be provided from the Central Asia or India needs the market for its commodity, they can take that to Central Asia as well. And obviously the route will be Pakistan are put in place, then they cannot be easily reversed and they can also mitigate the issues of war and other tensions. I entirely agree with you. Thank you. Thank you for coming to nice King's. It was a pleasure.